Hey guys, it's Chase with csjoseph.life doing another episode. Actually, not another episode. This is episode one of season 10. Uh, decided to uh, continue on with the uh, two seasons that we seem to have uh, left behind, which is season 10 and season 14, which are two additional seasons of eight episodes each of type comparisons. Uh, but this uh, type comparison is a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, types who have uh, the same uh, perceiving, perceiving functions instead of uh, necessarily like the same judging functions, etc. And then season 14, uh, we'll be continuing down another track of comparisons, etc. And uh, continuing to uh, make these available as uh, users or subscribers uh, have been able to... Uh, well, they keep submitting requests for this stuff, so I'm going to keep doing it. So anyway, be that as it may, Season 10, Episode 1. Uh, before I begin, one thing. Uh, Blasian 13 is the winner of Understanding Yourself and Others, an Introduction to the Interaction Styles uh, 2.0. Congratulations. I did say that I would announce the winner on the next uh, lecture that I did a whiteboard. So guess what? This lecture has a whiteboard on it, and I'm announcing the winner. Um, so, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I mean, it's either you're here for the content or my hair experiments. I mean, who knows? But, uh, we'll kind of see what happens. I mean, maybe, like, I'll get to a point where, like, my hair just randomly just, you know, does itself or perhaps transforms, kind of like a transformer, uh, you know, mid-episode. So, who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky, but probably not. Uh, so, anyway, with that being said, let's begin. How do ESTJs compare to ESFJs? So let's talk about both these types. Uh, these types are both, uh, they're both extroverted. Uh, they're both in the uh, guardian temperament, which means they are concrete, uh, they are affiliative, and they are systematic based. So concrete, affiliative, systematic, according to the temperament matrix. If you do not know what the temperament matrix is, you should probably read this guy, Stephen Montgomery. He uh, wrote the book, People Patterns. Uh, this will be available uh, to, uh, uh, to get on my website very soon. Uh, we're going to be launching that as well as all the book lists uh, for everybody. Uh, but the point is, uh, yeah, learn the temperament matrix. It is available on our type grid. You can download that directly off uh, the website after throwing your email on the very front page, or you can get it on our Discord. It's posted in the source material channel for all to get, or you can just do the command exclamation point type grid, and then it will just magically appear right before your eyes anywhere on the Discord. So awesome. So that's their temperament. They are the guardian temperament, past focus, duty based, protectors. These types are both traditionalists, and it's because of how they handle their perceptions. They are both SJs, so they are guardian types. Um, all about duty, honor, uh, loyalty, conviction, self discipline, etc., as well as seeking new experiences and experiencing whatever they can while simultaneously making sure not to go outside of their comfort zone. Comfort zone first, experiences are second, but they still seek experiences and slowly expand the horizons of their comfort zone, they expand the horizons of their introverted sensing, right? So just be aware, that is how these two types generally interact from a temperament point of view. Their interaction styles, however, are different. The ESTJ is direct initiating control, whereas the ESFJ is informative initiating movement. Direct initiating control means that they are a structure type, very in charge, they take the lead with various situations, whereas in form initiating movement means that they are a starter type. They start a lot of new things, but have a difficult time finishing uh, the things that they start. So just to give you an idea, uh, you know, uh, from a, a type grid standpoint, how these two uh, types are determined as a result of utilizing the type grid. So, uh, awesome. Now let's just actually like take a look at the cognitive functions. Uh, trying to make these a little bit shorter than usual, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Let's, uh, let's hope we can actually do that. Hopefully I can get this done inside 30 minutes. What do you think? Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, so, uh, so what, is, what is different about these types? They have the same perceiving functions. They have the, uh, the SI parent, the expert intuition child. SI parent is where their source of uh, the past, uh, the long-term memory access. These two types remember so much. Uh, they remember basically everything. Uh, because they have SI parent, SJs typically have the highest longevity of all the types, which means they live the longest. It's because they have the most long suffering and the most endurance of all of the types. So something to uh, make your folks uh, aware of. 
you know, if, if you're looking for someone that's going to live to be a century, the, the, one, the people who have the highest chances of doing it are the SJs. Uh, so that's kind of where that comes from. Uh, introverted sensing is that high SE, SI parent or SI hero, for example, that provides, uh, that definitely provides that uh, from that point of view. Uh, they also both have extroverted intuition child. Their inner child is very innocent and is very divine. It wants to give people what they want. They're very focused on other people telling them what they want so that they can dutifully perform what it is other people want them to do. It is very, very important. However, with the ESFJ side, it actually can get very dangerous because when you combine the FE hero with the NE child, they are at risk of becoming a doormat. Whereas on the other side, that's not the case. Um, uh, the ESTJ is as an overseer, they're very more they're more systematic about it. They're kind of more professional, more routine, more process driven, oriented with it. So they're all about giving other people what they want as long as it follows a predetermined process or procedure. Whereas ESFJ, that's not even the case. ESFJ is like, oh, I'm going to make you feel as good as possible. I'm going to give you everything you want. So I'm going to be like this doormat forever and ever. And everyone's just going to walk all over me. And I'm just going to sit here in suffering and just get over it. Yeah, really useful. This is why ESFJs need SFPs or, or other FI users around them who are not going to take advantage of them, right? And to help protect them from those people that do take advantage of them, from them being a doormat. I remember this one time, I have an ESFJ grandmother, and uh, when I was little, I would like take her to the card shop to get some baseball cards, for example, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I totally knew what I was doing. I was definitely taking advantage of my ESFJ grandmother, of course. And my ISFJ mother found out, and she let me up uh, <laughs> after that. And I do apologize, and it was a very, very rough, uh, a rough situation, but I'll never forget that. But that lesson means, you know, you just don't take advantage of ESFJs. You just don't. Even though, out of all of the types, they're the most easily taken advantage of. Because all they desire is somebody to want them, and someone to feel good about them. Someone that would give them recognition consistently. Someone that they could be loyal to. Someone who will actually listen to them. But, apparently, you know, most people, like, they start doing that, but then all of a sudden it's like a bait and switch. Oh yeah, I'm gonna listen to you, right? You know, oh yeah, you know, you're, you're a pretty beautiful ESFJ, but you know, after we're done in the sack, Hmm, yeah, probably not, and they're gonna move on. And then the ESFJ continues to get screwed over by people and taking advantage of people over and over and over and over and over again. And do they actually ever change? Do they actually ever learn their lesson? The answer is no. So because of that, it's important to you know support the supporter. ESFJs are known as the supporter. They need your support so that while they're trying to protect you, you protect them from other people taking advantage of, you know, their, uh, of just them desiring to give people what they want and to make them feel good because that's all they want to be. They want to, it's almost like this form of pride where they have uh, this pride complex, like I am the most giving person in the world and they can't let go of that title of I'm the most giving person in the world. And the reason why is because of their FI nemesis, because they worry that they are the most worthless person in the world. So they see themselves as if I'm the most giving person in the world, then that means, and if I continue to give and people give me recognition, I don't have to feel bad about myself anymore. Oh. Speaking about my grandmother, one of the ways that I love to torture her sometimes when she's being like really bratty or really catty or just really difficult to deal with, you know what I'll just do? I'll take away her opportunities to support. I'll take away her opportunities to care. I'll take away her opportunities to give people what they want. I will beat her to giving other people what they want. I will do it in front of her before she has the opportunity. I mean, I can, I have any hero, she has any child. I have twice the awareness she does, so I can actually see it beforehand and then actually take the action before she gets the chance. Oh, she gets really jealous and she feels guilty and she feels bad about herself as a result. I'll even do the dishes. I will start doing house chores. Ah, fastest way to piss off my grandmother. That's what I do to punish her. I just start doing her house chores. It's like getting in on her domain. And then that makes her feel like a horrible person because well, I'm not really useful right now. And clearly people don't think, you know, people don't feel good enough about me to, to allow me to support them. And because I'm not able to support these people, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bad person. Like, it's really sad that this is what happens to ESFJs, but I mean, it is what it is. So 
that in order to keep ESFJs healthy and have healthy relationships with them, you have to make sure that you give them every opportunity in the world to be supportive because it's the only way that they can live with themselves. For some reason, they're just worried that they're not good enough, that they're not worthy enough of you or their family or anything that they have. So as a result of that, they are so giving to the point where they will give everything that they have to another person just to prove that they're giving so that they can live with themselves in their own skin. Ah, well, the ESTJ certainly doesn't have that problem. Oh, no, because instead the ESTJ is like, hey, y'all just need to start thinking good of me. Y'all need to just like think really well of me right now because, you know, I don't want you to know that deep down I'm afraid that I'm a bad person, right? Whereas on this side, it's like, I'm afraid I'm a stupid person. But over here, it's like, oh, no, I'm afraid I'm a bad person. Very different. If, you, if you're trying to figure out whether or not you're an ESTJ or an ESFJ, that's literally one of the main differences right there. If you're afraid you're a bad person or if you're afraid you're a stupid person, which one? You know what I mean? Now, that's where it gets confusing for, with people because they're like, well, I, I worry that I'm a good person and, I, and, I'm, a, and I'm afraid I'm a, I'm a stupid person. You know, it kind of sounds the same worry and fear and it's semantics at that point. And I can't really tell the difference. So maybe I am an ESTJ or maybe I am an ESFJ. Okay, yes, ESFJs, I understand that. Just verify, you know, look at the type grid, learn your interaction style. I get that you have figured out that you're an SJ, no problem, but actually take the time, look at the type grid, stop looking at cognitive functions and look at your interaction style. Are you informative initiating movement or are you direct initiating control, right? I understand that ESFJs look at themselves as people who have to keep things under control because, but that's usually because there's abusive people in their life. ESFJs, when they're in their superego mode, they, get, they become insanely controlling when people stop listening to them, right? Whereas the ESTJ is just super controlling by default. And, and when the ESTJ becomes super supportive and helpful with their ENFJ superego, run for the hills. It's like, here, I'm going to help you. You know, there's this nice field of balloons and candy and donuts. I, I, I grew it just for you. All you have to do is just walk down that path in that direction, keep going, and you'll, you'll be able to take your fill. And then all of a sudden they fall into a pit and die. Yeah, very helpful. <laughs> very helpful, ENFJ. Yeah, good times. So anyway, ESTJs make decisions based on rationale. They make decisions based on you know what uh, research and uh, reference points and uh, uh, common sense, common knowledge, etc. And they have to have people around them. They're not comfortable with people around them or listening to people unless they are accredited or credentialed or uh, you know have some kind of recognition uh, where they are all about being official because ESTJs, everything has to be official to ESTJs. Now, technically, things have to be official for ESFJs as well, but ESTJs take it way further. And that's because they're TE hero. Extroverted thinking hero is all about what everyone else thinks. This is why ESTJs take their reputation very seriously. And they're trying to be as proper as possible. They gotta be as proper as possible. Everything is proper with ESTJs. Propriety is the name of the game. And if you're improper around them, they're gonna throw you out of their presence. They will not deal with you or they will leave, etc. Propriety is everything to an ESTJ. So remember, both these types, they're very loyal uh, and uh, they're, they're all about giving what other people want, you know? And it's funny, like an ESTJ, like. My former ESTJ coworker, I remember him, his NE child could see the NI inferior of our ESFP coworker, and he'd take him out be, behind the, uh, the building at work and try to give him life advice, right? It was hilarious because his INFP uh, subconscious was like trying to advocate for this ESFP man who was having a really hard time with life at the time uh, and uh, trying to give him life advice. And he didn't pull any punches. I mean, because, you know, the ESFP, he's got a FI parent, right? So he's like all about how he feels, you know, what he values. And then the ESTJ's got FE demon. So it's like, you're going to listen to me. You're going to listen to me. You're going to take my advice because it's what you want. You don't know it's what you want, but it is what you want. 
very interesting approach that ESTJs have. Or the FE Demon, another example, is when SE Demon teams up with SE Critic and they're walking by, you know, you're having a meeting, and then they're like, oh, meeting, grenade, throw it in, shut the door, and keep walking, boom. You know, they just do that drive-by. I'm gonna say this funny quip that's just gonna completely take all the air out of the room, you know, or, or, or something very offensive, and just keep on walking as if nothing had happened, you know? It's uh, like Operation Dumbo Drop on steroids. Anyway, interesting movie. The point is, it's, it, Unlike unlike ESFJs, you know, ESFJs, they worry about their self-worth. It's it's the ESTJs that really worry about whether or not they're intelligent, right? And this is why they have to constantly go to other people and be like, hey, what do you think about this? I have this idea, but what do you think about this idea? Is this something I should do? Is this something, what do you think? Is it something I should do? Is it something you think I should do, right? Nemesis, hero, parent, in that order, based on that sentence alone, right? Remember when our sentences, when we talk, our cognitive functions are actually coming out and ordering our sentences for us as we speak and interact with fellow human beings. It's the case for literally everybody. So be aware of that. Uh, so TI, TI Nemesis, um, all about, uh, you know, being afraid of the what, of the, uh, of the true false being, or uh, worried about the true false, excuse me. Fear is the inferior function, worry is the nemesis function. So they are worried that they're smart. They're worried that they know what they're talking about, okay? Whereas the ESFJ is more afraid of what they're talking about. They're afraid they're wrong. And ESFJs have to spend so much more time thinking about everything. And they spend a lot of time thinking, especially when they're introverted sensing parent, they're able to replay everything in their head. Yeah, sure, ESTJs can replay everything in their head but they have to break everything down into small pieces mentally and think it through all the way to the end. This is why when an ESFJ opens their mouth and has a conversation with you, especially an ESFJ that you're in a relationship with, for example, you better listen to them. They spent all that time and put all that effort into thinking about something in order to come to a conclusion, a true false conclusion that may involve you or involve them or whatever. But if you write them off, if you do not listen to them, you will literally cause hatred. They will hate you. Don't do that to them. Because it will engage their TE demon and they're constantly gonna be in your face. Well, you think this about me and you obviously think this, you think this, you think that. And they're just gonna start lighting everything on fire. And while they're gonna be, look like they're being really supportive to you, in reality, they're making moves behind the scenes that you're not even aware about, about controlling your life, controlling your finances, controlling your assets. Because it's like, hey, I've been so supportive for you all this long. I deserve this. So I'm definitely going to take what I deserve. And then like the ESFJ becomes like super mega selfish out of nowhere. What? Yeah. Be careful. You must always listen to the ESFJ. You must always give them their day in court. ESTJs, it's much different. You have to always make sure that the ESTJ feels good about themselves. Just make them feel good. That's all you gotta do. Be proper, handle the propriety, and then just make them feel good, right? And being proper, that also includes like making sure your shoe's tied because they have SE Critic. And guess what, SE Critic, both these types have SE Critic. SE Critic makes both these types really elitist. Yes, I said it, they're literally elitist. These two types together are the most elitist of all the types. It is super annoying and I can't stand them when they do it. They're like, oh, well, you're obviously not smart because you didn't follow the bouncing ball in life just like everyone else should. I followed the bouncing ball and you know, I had a really good success going to law school or I, I had really good success becoming a doctor, but you obviously didn't have what it takes, you know? And the, the proof of that is the fact that your shoe is untied right now and it shows that you have no respect for proper clothing or proper fashion or proper anything, you know, and because of that, I'm going to judge you right now because of your inability to dress yourself means you that are completely incapable of doing anything else in your life. Yeah, I'm going to punch them. Like seriously, stop doing that. It's like SE Critic is insanely pompous sometimes. It is insanely critical towards the physical environment. 
if you have like dog hair on your shirt, if you're if you if you're missing some buttons, or if your shoes aren't tied, if your hair isn't done in a certain way, they are very critical towards it. Of course, you know, you can always criticize them, but that's why they always make sure they are dressed as perfectly as possible. They take their dress very insane, their outward appearance very seriously. But if you want to teach them a lesson, if you want to hit them really hard, do something that makes them aware that they're not dressed perfectly. It'll definitely bring them down a few notches without creating hatred. Otherwise, the only other thing you could probably do is just go after their inferior function and tell them, hey, you're a bad person, or tell this person, hey, you're stupid. But then they'll never forget that and they'll come after you. Of course, you could also go for their child as well. Why would I ever want to be around you? Why would I ever want to be around you? You're not supportive enough for me. You're not smart enough for me. Oh, that's some real child abuse. Don't do that. Be really careful. Watch out for these pressure points. Of course, any cognitive function could potentially be a pressure point, but some cognitive functions are more sensitive than others. Uh, they're all, they are all sensitive in their own way, but the real big ones, inferior function and the critic and the child, be very, very careful. And as someone aptly put in the uh, comments of the last lecture I released, the non-stream lecture that I released, which was cognitive attitudes of the inferior function, so I basically said uh, in the comments, and shout out to this person, even though I technically don't remember their name off the top of my head, but they said it this way. If you abuse the child, you're going to hurt the person. If you abuse the inferior, they're gonna hurt you. That's absolutely true, that's absolutely true. If you hit the inferior function, they're gonna come after you very hard, so you gotta be careful. Watch out for that. <sighs> Both of these types have NI trickster. NI trickster is this, they are just completely unaware of what these people want. Do not allow, ever allow any of these types, the ESTJ or the ESFJ, never let them make decisions on their own. Like seriously, never allow them to make decisions by themselves. Please avoid this because every time you do, if you allow them to make decisions on their own, they're going to be in a pit. Like they're going to will themselves over a cliff. Bad financial decisions bad wedding decisions, uh, bad parenting decisions, bad school decisions, bad, bad, bad. Instead, what you need to do is tell these people what they should do. You are here to obligate these people. These people need to be obligated by you, or at least some NISE user out there. SE users, you need to obligate these people. Obligating these people does not make you a bad person. Understand that. Obligating these people do not make you a bad person. Obligating these people actually keeps them safe. Actually keeps them from making bad decisions. So make sure you're obligating these people. Tell these people what they should do. Never tell them what they want. Never allow them to want anything in their whole life. Unless, of course, they're wanting to have an experience that they've already had before and they want to have a redo because SI parent loves redoing and loves having, uh, loves experiencing the familiar because these people need to stay in their familiar. If they're trying to go out and do something on their own, do not let them do it by themselves. Do not let them do it by themselves. You have to go with them, hold their hand and help it become familiar to them. They need it because they have to acclimate to everything. These are SI parents people, very pessimistic with their introverted sensing, okay? Which means familiarity is everything. And of course, this concept of familiarity breeds contempt is the worst with both these types, especially since they both have SE critics. Wow, that sucks. Gotta love that familiarity breeds contempt plus, you know, uh, I mean, Jesus said, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. And the reason why is SE critic. Wow. Yeah, literally. Because if it's not regular, if it's not normal, anything abnormal or anything outside of common sense is not real. It's not concrete. It's something I need to be afraid of. And these two types can live in fear when it comes to the what if. Provided... That means their SI parent is uncomfortable. But as soon as their SI parent is comfortable, even with the unfamiliar, then they can use their any child and they can kind of figure out ways to bring people along with them to have a shared experience. Do not let these people want to do things on their own. Instead, 
do it with them and make it a shared experience. And when you make it a shared experience, they're more secure in the decision and then success will be within their grasp. If you let them make these decisions on their own and let them want things on their own, they're just going to bite them in the butt and they will end up regretting making these decisions. These types or SJs in general walk around with a lot of regret and it's usually because they didn't have somebody there with them to share the experience with them right? They didn't have an SE user, for example, to share in that experience with them and to be by their side and walk them through it step by step. Because they don't, if they've never done something before, they are going to fail and they're going to fail miserably. They need somebody near them to help walk them through it. The difference is, is that they're motivated differently, or well, they're kind of motivated the same, they both have self-discipline, but they make decisions about it differently. The ESFJ makes the decisions based on the values of the other person they're sharing the experience with, or the ESTJ makes decisions based on the intelligence of the other person that they're sharing the experience with. They need to be around smart people because they're worried that they're not intelligent. They're worried that they don't know enough, that they're not really smart. So they need to surround themselves with smart people so that they can become smart. This is why ESTJs read a bunch of books that specifically to increase their intelligence and to absorb all those reference points so that they can become this mini library of Alexandria. Not as powerful or as strong as the ISTJ, but you know what? ESTJ is a close second and they could definitely learn all these things, right? And what that does is that empowers them, especially when they're not afraid that they're a bad person and empowers them to become the INFP subconscious which is absolutely fantastic. The ESTJ, especially in middle age, towards old age, they become this amazing philosopher. They may have been that Olympic athlete when they were growing up, when they were in their youth, but in their middle age to old age, they're this amazing academic, this amazing philosopher with a core interpersonal philosophy that could, has the potential to change the world or change reality as we know it. Because the ESTJ, both these types, become so much more focused on the metaphysical the older they get, and they start shying away from the concrete and becoming way more abstract. Kind of hypocritical, isn't it? For all the people, all the abstract people they gave crap to in their youth, and then all of a sudden they're chasing after the abstract when they're older. Funny, funny how that works. Of course, the reverse is also true with NTs and NFs. They're really focused on the abstract growing up, but they become even way more focused on the concrete as they get older. Funny how that works. That's what we call subconscious development. The ESFJ is a little different. When they absolutely know for a fact that they are correct and they have spent all the time thinking and doing everything that they can and knowing that they are 100% correct and they've crunched everything down and they are not afraid that they are wrong anymore, they can enter into their INTP subconscious and become this amazing engineer. I gotta say, I have met some ESFJ physicists that blow my mind. It's unbelievable. And it's because of their INTP subconscious, okay? If, you know, uh, whereas, you know, an ESTJ is more focused on philosophy. That's a huge difference right there. If you don't know if you're an ESTJ or an ESFJ, well, guess what? ESTJs, more philosophical, they like, they take, uh, they, almost every ESTJ in college takes the humanities, understands philosophy, has read Plato, for example, uh, Aristotle, uh, Socrates, they know all about that. Whereas the ESFJ, not so much, they're more focused on the sciences. Think about that. But it says ESF, weren't they more people focused? Wouldn't the ESF be like more philosophical? No, get your head out of the stupid MBTI lettering system dichotomy crap. That's not actually how this works. It's based on cognitive functions, okay? Because that means they have TI in their top four functions here, the ESFJ, which means the ESFJ is technically a thinker. Conversely, the ESTJ has FI in its top four functions for its ego. That means the ESTJ is technically a feeler. Oh, yeah, you probably didn't know that. Well, that's a fact. Do not let these people make decisions on their own. Share experiences with them so that they are safe and so that you know the decisions they're making will not end up taking them over a cliff. Please 
do that for them in this way, they'll be safe, they'll be secure, and they will be willing to go after the unfamiliar because you are right there with them by their side every step of the way, and that's everything these people need. We talked about F.E. Demon a little bit, T.E. Demon. We also talked about, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, for example. But again, the main, the major difference is here, the ESFJ is all about how everyone else feels. The ESTJ does not give a damn how anyone else feels. If you're trying to figure out if you're one type or the other, that's a major difference right there. Uh, the ESFJ is afraid of uh, being incorrect, afraid that they don't know enough. Afraid that they're stupid. That's a thing. Whereas the uh, ESTJ is afraid of being a bad person. The ESTJ is worried about being dumb or stupid or not knowing enough. They're constantly asking people, what do they, uh, how do you think about this? Whereas the ESFJ is asking people, you know, hey, how do you feel about this? The ESFJ craves recognition, right? Whereas the ESTJ craves status. It's completely different, guys. If you crave status more than recognition, chances are you're the ESTJ. And vice versa, you know, if you crave recognition more, then you're the ESFJ. But guys, seriously, regardless of these differences and these similarities, use the freaking type grid, please. Use the type grid. Find out what your interaction style is. If you're not sure which of these types you are, then look at your interaction style. Are you informative initiating movement or are you direct initiating control? That's all you need to figure out. And if you need help figuring that out, watch season two playlist on this YouTube channel slash podcast. Also watch uh, or listen to season 15. Those two seasons together will give you all the information that you need to be able to use the type grid appropriately so you can type yourself and others accurately. Do that and you will be successful. So yeah, we talk, and uh, another different, you know, again, the ESTJ does not care what other people feel at all, and uh, uh, whereas the ESFJ doesn't really care about what other people think at all. They don't really care about what other people know. Okay, let's think about that for a second. The ESFJ does not care about what other people know. They do not care what other people believe. What they care about is just what they think. They're afraid of what they think, but they care about what they think and they care about what other people value. The ESTJ cares about what they value themselves. Now, an ESFJ, because of how FE works, they're like, well, well, I, I care about what I value. Well, you're actually talking about your FI nemesis. You're not actually talking about your FE hero. So it's a little bit more confusing. It's a bit more difficult that way for ESFJs to, um, to type themselves. And I get it, but just keep spending more time. Use your TI inferior, verify, 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 and you will know what you are. Learn and master the type grid, season two and season 15, plus the type grid tool, the PDF, whatever. Use it and you will be successful, ESFJs. You will know what type you are, okay? So remember guys, these two types, they see the world through the same eyes but they make decisions about it differently, completely different. It's all about reference points and reference material and becoming that philosopher, whereas here it's all about values and what other people value and then becoming so intelligent they can become like a physicist, for example, or a scientist with their INTP subconscious, completely different approach. Make sure that you guys understand this when you're trying to type yourself uh, so that you guys uh, are actually accurate and not making the same mistake I did when I initially took the test. And I'm like, oh, it says INFJ. And then and I take the test again. Oh, it's INTJ. And then I thought I was an INTJ for years when in reality I'm actually an ENTP. You know what I mean? Don't fall into that trap like I did. Use the type grid. Understand the temperament. Understand the interaction style. Understand the cognitive functions like what we've just gone through. And you will be more successful. So... Anyway, that's it for season 10, episode one. If you have any questions or comments about ESTJs or ESFJs, leave it in the description below and I will answer your comments. I answer everyone's comments on this channel or at least read all of them. Uh, sometimes I don't always get the replies though, uh, which can be a little bit difficult, so just be aware of that. Uh, also, uh, join our Discord server for our Q&A sessions if you haven't already. 
And then also uh, our meetup group joined that. The links are also below in the description and uh, we're definitely uh, going to be uh, uh, spinning that up more. Also, we're gonna be releasing our ambassador program so that people could start, uh, start up the meetup group and organize meetup groups around the world. And we're going to be doing that uh, potentially through meetup.com as well. So if you're interested in that, just message me on Discord or send me an email and uh, we can definitely have that conversation, so. Anyway, it's about uh, 35 minutes for this lecture, and uh, I'm going to be going live here in a few minutes, so uh, good to know that uh, we didn't spend too much time on that. So anyway, with all that being said, I'll see you guys tonight.